uh, sort of market assessment. You can imagine uh, one of the projects relates to a virtual biopsy for cancer. And in this one, we're looking at relating multimodal imaging techniques to look at texture analysis in the brain by looking at co-registration of different imaging sequences and different imaging protocols to actually allow us to do rapid registration for tumor um, genotyping. If you can have this type of analysis, it allows us to do essentially a virtual in vivo biopsy to allow you to quickly identify different types of tumors and quickly get at those without having to go in and um, actually do a surgical treatment. Another aspect that we're working on with General Electric is mobile um, detection for stroke. And this is using electrical impedance tomography. What they wanted us to do was to come up with a quick uh, mobile device they could use in the ambulance to get at detecting strokes and which type of stroke it was so that you could go in and quickly identify which treatment the patient should have by again looking at developing something that you could put on quickly and image the brain exteriorly with a rapid um, impedance tomography you can make these detections. A number of you are familiar with the work of Dr. Garnett Sutherland, and I believe he presented at the uh, Nanotechnology Albert Ingenuity um, seminar. He does image guided surgery um, with his neuro robot, and he's been able to do this um, actually with robotic surgery. One of his concerns is actually making sure that when he does that, he gets the tumor completely eradicated. What he wants to do is actually, and we've heard this earlier, we we'll talk about nanoparticles. So if he can actually um, embed uh, nanomagnetic particles in the tumor, then when he's got the MRI, he can actually make sure that he's using th a thermal ablation agent to make sure that in fact he's actually got all of the tumor the first time by combining these two techniques. So that's one of the areas with this new um, proposal that we're actually going to follow up with. The last example I want to talk about is tissue characterization. And there's two here. One is looking at osteoporosis. And this is taking a standard bone scan that we can get with a new micro CT that will be in the Bose Center. I'll talk about in a second. And with this, we can go through and get the structure of bones. That's not new. What is new then is extending it to the work of Dr. Steve Boyd, where he can actually not only quantify the mechanical properties of that bone structure, he can then go on to predict over time the quality of that bone and develop algorithms to say, how that bone is adapting over time with load. So you can imagine in terms of pharmaceuticals, in terms of prediction, how that's going to change. Another area is with AHFMR and a characterization of osteoarthritis. So let's talk quickly about this Bose biomaterials. We heard about the need for smart biomaterials in micro nanotechnologies, as well as regenerative medicine and tissue engineering. Working with Bose, it's the same company that does the uh, hearing and the speakers, they have an Electroforce systems group that does uh, tissue engineering and materials testing. With them, we've got a um, center that is focused R&D work, so we're working on product development with them, but we're also able to be a service provider for contract testing, contract data collection, so in other words, proof of concept work, we're also going to be their worldwide training center for all of their materials. We also have some other work that I can't really talk about, but lots of other industry is actually interested in working with us. So what does this involve? It's a suite of Bose equipment. It's GLP certified, and it's biohazard level two. Um, what do we have there? We've got mechanical testing equipment. 
We're commissioning this in winter. Training will be done in spring and will be operational, I'll say fall, but if we're lucky, summer. Um, we have a stent and graft tester. We will have a micro CT from ScanCo. And we will have biodynamic systems, so those allow us to test in physiological environments. And we will also have a planar biaxial tester, so that means we can test in two directions at the same time. And this works for physiological materials, biomaterials, as well as any standard mechanical materials that you would like to be testing. So, in summary, we've got huge opportunity for success. We've got innovation capacity great industry, we've got accelerated clinical access, we've got some great new infrastructure, and we've got outstanding people to work with. So we're pretty excited about the opportunities that are before us. Thanks very much. Great, thank you. So we'll take uh, maybe one question, um, just to get people moving out for the caffeine uh, addictions here shortly. So. IP ownership, I have two slides that we have to talk to. The IP ownership is the same for both of them. Um, we have agreements in place that if a company comes in with their own IP, they own it. Um, if it's contract work for testing, they maintain it. If it's IP that is generated as part of collaborative work with BioVantage, then we do a standard um, joint agreement where we would agree up front what foreground IP is brought in and then we disclose as we go along jointly and then there would be an agreement about who owns what as we go along. Um, in some cases there might be some IP that's generated uh, that the company doesn't own at all and people in BioVantage, in which case BioVantage would own it. So it's, it's um, well documented and we have a, a very strong process in place for that. Yeah? Uh, just to follow on, does that uh, provide for sort of exclusive first right to license uh, in a typically generated relationship with private involvement? Yeah, we um, right now are working on a case by case basis. It depends what the agreement is with the industry. Certainly um, if it's a an agreement with this jointly developed with the industry, there would likely be that type of arrangement, but that is on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, great. There was one more question here, but maybe you guys could take it offline in the break. So, Dr. Ronsky, thank you very Thanks much for your much. talk.